have Lido here for a second master class. Uh, the one this afternoon was amazing. And we're all very excited. I'm sure you're all very excited uh, to hear from him. So without further ado, there you go. Thank you, sir. Um, hey, everybody. <coughs> um, my name is Lido, and uh, I'm here to talk to you guys today about music. Uh, kind of especially focused around two EPs that I put out called uh, I Owe You, one and two. Um, I've been here once before. I, I, did one, I did one of these earlier today as well, um, but I've been here once before, and I had a lot of fun, and I figured it'd be a cool excuse coming back here and talking about these couple projects and what's happened since last time. Um, so um, the way that I like doing these things is have it be as much of a conversation as possible. That's why we've kept these classes so intimate and tight. Um, so I want to be able to actually talk to you guys and, and talk to you about the stuff that you care about and the stuff that you actually like want to know about. Um, it's not super interesting just me standing here and like vomiting whatever I think is interesting upon you guys like you guys should let me know what you think is cool and what you want to talk about um, and we'll kind of just take it from there that was the fun part about earlier today I started out with kind of a plan and as soon as I abandoned them did that things got really cool uh, <laughs> so um, maybe we do that from the start this time around um, also um, two disclaimers um, I've been in Norway for the past month and a half fish uh, which means that my English is a little rusty right now so I might be like struggling to find a few words here and there um, and disclaimer number two and advice number one of today if you can avoid buying the new um, MacBooks do so because um, they've been giving us a lot of shit today um, about halfway through the other class it kind of just like died and didn't come back on um, while the charger was plugged in and everything. So we'll see what happens this time around. It looks like it's working, but in case it stops working, it'll be all just philosophy from there. It'll be great. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, first of all, um, how many producers do we have here right now? Six. So pretty much all producers. Very dope. Uh, how many of you guys write songs? very cool also almost everybody um how many singers cool um and so that so i'm assuming singers write your own lyrics and like stuff like that too cool very great um i do all of those things for my own project um i both do a lot of vocals produce everything mix mostly everything um and write all the lyrics come up with all the concepts um so we can talk about all of those things. Um, if you guys have questions about a certain bar or a certain metaphor or a certain chord, a certain drum sample, doesn't really matter. We can talk about whatever. Um, and yeah. So yeah, I'll start just talking a little bit about the concept of these two EPs that I put out um, called I O U, which initially... Um, it's kind of like the, the the conclusion of a of a project that I made called Everything, and it's kind of like the ending of that story and the like the the, the process um, after that whole thing was done. Um, so I O U one is very focused on the world. It's very focused on my family and my friends and um, and sort of uh, getting back out there I guess um, and I owe you two is way more introverted and sort of dealing with a lot of the pent-up emotions um, and uh, um, yeah more focused on me and self-love and understanding and shit like that um, that's on like the conceptual side on the um, production side what I like doing is taking or just like music making side what I like doing is every time I go into a project I try to find something that I'm I feel like I'm not that good at um, bless you and I try to make it a goal for each project to get better at something um, 
it's almost like uh, what's it called like a like a thesis or whatever how like at the end of you learning something you're supposed to like make something that's almost what a project is like for me so IOU 1 is the most interesting one to me production wise because it's so very focused around sound design I felt like my mixes weren't as good as I wanted them to be and I felt like um, my sound design wasn't as interesting as I wanted it to be I wanted to push myself um, on those things so it's very focused around that minimal lyrics minimal vocals really a lot of heavy processing and then IOU 2 it's the opposite that's where I felt like I hadn't been writing lyrics for many many years and pretty much the whole project is focused around getting lyrics right and getting emotions right um, and the production aspect of that is interesting too I think because it's a lot about making space for the vocal and complementing the vocal um, which is something that I think us producers forget about a lot um, um, but yeah that's the overall idea of those two EPs um, and I feel like I got a little bit better at both of those things throughout those processes and that makes it all worth it um, uh, yeah I feel like that's an alright introduction um, I pulled up a few songs last time around so obviously um, I would like to pull up other songs this time around but you guys let me know which ones you want to mess around with too I figured I would start with Outstanding just because this one is the one that I'm the most happiest the most happy with thank you uh, out of pretty much any song that I've ever mixed um, so what I have with me is the original sessions of all uh, the different songs as you can see they're incredibly messy still nothing is labeled everything is a complete chaos but I have like a little bit of a system and I think I can find my way around it um, and so that's this is what it looks like when I'm done with a song um, and then I bounce everything out mixed like the way that I've made it sound towards the end um, and I take everything to a friend of mine <clears throat> and basically mix it through his hands so I'm just sitting in the back of the room and kind of yelling at him and telling him I want it more like this and I want to feel this more and I want da 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 and kind of just let him physically do it because there's something about I very often go blind on things towards the end and I'm like oh, I can see I can see on the screen it's supposed to be getting louder but I'm not feeling it and da 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 and I'm not the most technical guy in the world I don't know that much about compressors and shit like that so it's always good to have somebody else touch it and bring some perspective into the process um, so that is after this this is as far as I took it and then I took it a step further with my friend after that but I figured this is more interesting than just the last mixing stage um, so yeah I'll play a little bit of this and then let's see if you guys have anything you want to talk about on this one. Happy birthday. I hope all your dreams come true. Pick your feet up. Try again, I'm proud of you. There'll be puddles. There'll be pebbles in your shoes. They almost broke your brother They almost broke your friend And soon there'll be another I know it's not the end For you
You guys are very nice. Um, cool. So this is outstanding. This is third track on IOU one, and um, there's a lot of weird shit about this one um, that we could dive into. Um, I'm gonna just start talking about the stuff that I think is interesting, and then you guys just tag along whenever, um, and interrupt me whenever you want. Definitely. Um, so the first thing that happens in this song is this weird Happy birthday. arpeggio feeling. Oh, first of all, I'm just going to say this is a song about my sister. So the entire concept of this is um, um, sort of like words of encouragement for my sister. Um, her like leaving the nest and like going out into the world and me having had my path and her finding her path and um you know dealing with boys and like all the things that you deal with in life um so it's kind of like a song to her um and there's a few conceptual things that happen because of that that i'll explain in a little bit um but we'll start from the beginning so this arpeggio thing right here so in general i think i have a pretty like I think I have a pretty. I think I have a pretty like manual way of doing a lot of things. Um, I don't use a lot of crazy fancy plugins and tweak them in a way that makes them make magical sounds. Uh, most of the stuff that I'm doing is just I have weird ideas and I take them very literally and kind of just do it the way that I know how to do it. So say this for example, this arpeggio is. Um, me playing see if you look can you see it on the screen yeah so this is what this is actually made out of these are um, crystallizer cranked to the max on a saw pad that I played and it sounded like this and there was just a moment in that that I was like oh that's really cool and I just chopped that moment and then it turned into and there's two layers of it I think that are probably a little different yeah and they're basically just like pieces of different moments in that little little, little thing the first one yeah And then right there it just loops um so it's not a crazy arpeggiator like t t automation through whatever it's just manually chopping one moment of something that was processed did you do that on like did you play that part with Chris thinking you were going to chop it after or was it like a second thought no it, 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 that was the original idea oh, yeah, i was yeah. like i want something that sounds like an arpeggio yeah. but i don't want it to be as clean as an arpeggio would be so like with that, you obviously get the tail of what happened before that moment and you chop it. So it just becomes like this weird, like static sure. arpeggio or whatever. Um, but yeah, I did have like some sort of vision with that. <laughs> and then this is the processing that I have on that track. Um, a delay, a auto pan that's going back and forth, um, a shimmer on top of it and then just a glue compressor to squash that shit and then a bit crusher on top of that which is this automation that you see at the bottom here so it goes for a while I'll play here and right before it drops into it instead of pitching it down or filtering it or whatever I'm just bit crushing it And then that goes so transitionary wise. They almost broke your brother. Yeah. So that's that. Um, and also conceptually, I wanted the 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 beginning of the song to feel very fragile, which is kind of why I like the arpeggio, the arpeggio like sounding synth and 
the vocalist performed very fragile without much tuning or anything in the beginning and kind of like in the back of a room so it kind of feels like you're sitting in a little room by yourself type of bathroom situation um and it's like a lot of it is a little bit out of tune and kind of fragile and shaky. Happy birthday. I hope all your dreams come true. Pick your feet up. Try again. I'm proud of you. And then the performance and the EQ, the processing of the track, changes when the synth comes in with that whole transition. They almost broke your brother. It's much steadier. They almost broke your friend. And soon there'll be another. I know it's not the end. Yeah. Um. All the drums on this one is very percuss percussion-y, um, which is something that I like a lot. Um, it's kind of ironic because I'm actually a drummer by trade, but um, I like weird little sounds that make up the drums. Um, and a lot of it is like, this is a bottle, somehow pitched up and like tweaked and like probably transient. Oh, no, look at that. Already sounded like that. Oh, because I have a ping pong delay that I made act like a spring verb. So super high. Um, super fast delay. So you get a little bit of a. Um, that's one of my favorite like snares. I've been using it a lot lately. <laughs> 